Book 15 contained a lot of surprises. As you can see on my screen, my predictions that I did in previous videos' accuracies were mixed to say the least. One of the best, most unexpected surprises that happened was us getting to see the role before the Scorching and even had one of the characters who was born before the Scorching as a main character. With this new evolution, it's only fair to make a new video. Plus, my old theory, which I will call hybrid evolution theory, was a tiny bit unrealistic to normal evolution. Then again, we need to fit 2 million years of evolution or so into just 2,000 as Dark Soccer and Clear Sight appear similar to the modern tribes of dragons. So here's my next best guesses. Before we begin, let me just warn you that this video will contain spoilers for Flames of Hope. It isn't a book you want to skip over, so if you haven't read it, skip over to the video until you can return spoilers free. Also, if you're new to this channel, please think about subscribing. I regularly post both Wings of Fire and Warrior Cats content, so you'll never be bored. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me. Without further ado, let's begin the video. Let me just disclose something first. These are just my theories. Evolution is incredibly complicated. I also recognize that evolution is a spectrum not aligned with dots on it that are species. I just decided to pick out a few places to randomly put beta tribes. We can also not know if there are any extinct tribes. I honestly think it would be very cool if there was and it wasn't a fake out like the leaf wings. Adding on to that, dragons are sentient creatures who can make complex choices. I've done my best to add some of that into my explanations for evolution, but if a beauty standard says that dra red dragons are the best, more red dragons will be born and I can't predict subjectivity. I'm sticking to my previous idea about the scorching though. Though we know it was dragon caused now, I also like to think a solar flare could have taken out scavenger technology and raised heat levels, making it, it difficult for them to fight back. I also think it may be unrealistic for every tribe to have started in Imperia due to how much desert there is. I think in ancient times there may have not been that much desert, but due to desertification, the kingdom of the sand slowly expanded. Because the land was becoming less fertile, there was less room for dragons, and the Pantalian tribes, Leafwings, and Beetlewings got kicked out. Also, I'm not sure why dragons didn't evolve on Pantala, and it appears the humans didn't either. Whatever, I guess that's another problem for another book. Let's talk about the dragon tribes themselves now. Dragons are the most common ancestor of all modern tribes, they have mixed a variety of traits and are pretty cool. From there, we split into three tribes as opposed to the original four that I had. These tribes are Water Wings, Poison Wings, and Flame Wings. The Water Wings tribe will eventually become the modern Ice, Sea, and Mud Wings. I decided to merge in Ice Wings because Sea Wings and Ice Wings both likely have similar eyes as they needed better protection from the fierceness and brightness of ice, or the saltiness and darkness of the deep sea. Sea Wings have also been mentioned twice to have blue blood. I'm not sure whether this is a mistake or not, but I'm going to take this as a clue that they may be related, and some Sea Wings, mainly Royal Wings, Ones might have blue blood due to their connection to the ancient ice wings, most likely through albatross now that I think about it. Ice wings also have connections to sea wings as they tend to live closer to the ocean from what we've seen with all the fishing villages and the palaces and they spend time hunting on icebergs at sea. The ice wings most likely were the first dragon tribe to emerge fully from the water wings as they have a very hard to live in environment and survival of the fist would most likely be ramped up to the max. The temperature isolation of the Ice Kingdom may also lead to a lot of dragons not coming in and mixing their bloodlines in, aka a lot of incest happens over there in the Ice Kingdom. The Water Wings as a whole tended to be a, a lot thicker built. They had blue undersides and brown on top to help with camouflage. There were Water Wings for hotter and colder temperatures and the colder ones eventually became the Ice Wings. The other two tribes split because of geographics. Mud Wings were closer to shore and interbred with the other tribes, mainly the Sky Wings, which is how they gained their fire, while Sea Wings stayed at sea. Over time, the brown grew on the Mud Wings and Sea Wings became more blue and gained a couple more colors. After as the poison wings, we become the sands, rain, leaf, and beetle wings. All these tribes have green, yellow, or rainbow type of scales. Almost all of these tribes have poison and are a bit leaner than the other tribes. They also, strangely enough, have very long tails compared to the other tribes. I have no idea why that is. I decided to lump in leaf wings with the other poison wings because a lizard. She is described as having eyes like a rain wings and has two wings that curve like leaves. Leaf wings and rain wings also have a very similar build in the official art. The leaf wings may have lost their poison over time as they gained more in the leaf speak area. We don't know what the beetle wings look like for certain, but I think that they would be much more thicker scaled and heavier built than modern silk wings, hence the name beetle. The poison wings split off into the forest wings and scorpion wings. The forest wings are bright, multicolored, and incredibly thin. The scorpion wings have thicker scales and better heat resistance. They also tend to be a tiny bit multicolored, but it's more of a shimmer than the actual differently colored scales. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Pyrian Desert expansion causes a lack of fertile land for dragon tribes. Because of that, the Pantalian tribes of Leafwings and Beetlewings split off and go to Pantala. In this new environment, they diverge from their original tribes a lot more. Sandwings are easily able to adapt to the growing desert. The vastness of the desert and the lack of other tribes' interests means that they are able to occupy a lot of land without any challengers. Despite the problem of water, they managed to become one of the largest dragon tribes in Pyria. Their large empire and population means that their tribe tends have a ripple effect for others. Our final beta tribe is the Flamelings. The Flamelings are the ancestors of only Nightwings and Skylings. Both of them are good flyers in the series and also the hottest of flames. There's also a dragon shown in Flames of Hope who is black and red scales. Flamelings are usually black and red in my headcans, like Baby's first emo OC. They tend to have the largest and weirdest of horns out of any tribe. Flamelings like living in caves, and the higher you go up, the more prestigious you tend to be. Upper class dragons tend to be the strongest flyers for that reason. Flamings as a tribe are smaller than the other two, and stayed isolationists so they wouldn't ha get massacred in any war they found themselves in. The tribe began to split over a difference in opinion over what to do with dragonettes born with powers. The Skywings stayed in the highlands, hid their eggs in caves, and threw fireborns off cliffs. All Nightwings moved to the lowland gorges and kept their eggs out in the moonlight raising mind readers and uh, future seers. Skywings kept their sleek aerodynamic build while Nightwings became bulkier over time and also gained darker colors to camouflage in the thick dark pine forests. Let's get more into the canon territory now with what we know about the modern tribes and possibly speculate on their futures. The Beetlewings split into two tribes the 2000 years after Scorching or so after the arrival of a genetic Eve slash prophet called Clear Sight from the Nightwing tribe. These two tribes are the Silkwings, who have thinner scales now, Antenna and a lack of poison, and the Hivewings, who have poison, thicker scales, and darker scale colors. The Nightwings and the Rainwings end up settling in the rainforest together. Over many generations, the two tribes may slowly turn into one, called a Stormwing to a Venom, a chance to be able to see the future depending on the moon, and the rainbow scales. The Rainwing genetics tend to be way more prominent than Nightwings and the Stormwing tribe, though occasionally fully monocolor dragonettes will pop up. So those are all my theories on dragon evolution. Does this match up with your ideas? Did you learn a bit more about evolution? I'd be glad if you did. Even if you didn't, thank you for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I make Wings of Fire and Aurora Cats videos pretty often, and your support means a lot to me. And to those who are already subscribed, thank you for your continued support. I wouldn't have gotten here without y'all. Have a nice day. Rogan out.